Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, back from vacation, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. It's time for play props across the NBA tonight, Nate. We've got a little five-game slate here, uh, but still a good amount to choose from that we are bringing you. Uh, as we're recording, full transparency, still some stuff to come in the uh, Memphis-Minnesota game. So we won't be able to use that game as we are not positive who's playing in it yet, but still some four other games that we are able to choose from. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Also got a couple game videos up for you today that we're bringing you all this stuff each and every weekday of the regular season. Season. And if you head to the lines.com, that's where we have our great written content for you guys. Nate puts those player props up there for you and our great odds finder tool within each of his articles. So you can make sure you're shopping those lines and NBA player props to the best of your ability across U.S. sportsbooks. Nate, let's go ahead and jump into your first play a prop for tonight. Yeah, Memphis, New Orleans game with Zion yeah, yeah. As, a, as, as a game time decision. So that's what we're waiting on for props there. <clears throat> Uh, Luka Doncic, though, his props are up, and uh, he's facing the Clippers, which he loves to do. You know, he's roasted them, as we know, in the playoffs, but last four regular season, 41 points per game, 10 rebounds, 8 assists, 42% usage, 41 minutes per game, ho-hum. You could say, oh, well, PG missed the last two when he averaged 48 points per game, Uh, but, you know, he still had a solid game. the one game that was at LA in that span, I guess it was diminished, but then you go back with both PG and Kawhi active in March in Dallas uh, in 21, Luke had 42, nine assists, shot 57% from the floor. He's averaging nearly six threes per game at nearly 50% against this team. So if those guys are strong enough or rangy enough to keep him from getting to the rim, which he's been doing at will this season, uh, he has been willing to step back on them. And the biggest thing here is the home road splits for Dallas as a team. I mean, first of all, they had some struggles here at Washington, uh, at losing at Orlando. And now they're, but now they're back home. And it's just, it's going to be a different story, especially for Luca this year, averaging 36 at home compared to 32 on the road. Still pretty impressive, but the efficiency is way better. 134 offensive rating at home versus 109 on the road getting to the free throw line 13 times per game. And in his last game here against Portland, he was just, he had a triple double. He had uh, 42 points, got to the line 18 times. He's just completely undeal wittable uh, to, to steal a phrase. Uh, so, I mean, he's at 40 and a half points and assists. You get minus odds there, minus 120. I don't hate it. 32 and a half points is fine. He's pretty much you. You can tell he's he's banking on thirty five in a win because that's only plus one ninety at Fanduel. It's just like yeah, what else? So you can get some juice five threes in a win at plus six thirty. I don't love that because he's he's getting to the rim more than he's shooting threes this year. But I do like the assists because LA on a back to back here they yeah. they tend to score more on a back to back and give up more dimes last year uh, playing with tired legs. So. I mean, yeah, just the overall stat line for Luca. you expect at this point 50 points, rebounds, assists, which is where we're at. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, if it's if you're taking Luca against the Clippers, I'm with you. Uh, there's some teams he just loves to just smash, and this is probably at the top of his list, right? So um, points, whatever. With him, it's it's all inflated because it's him and it's this year, uh, and he's he's he came out the gate hot. So you know he, we're not sitting around waiting for Luca to get back into his playoff form if he's going to be there all season. Uh, I don't I don't think there's going to be much of a letdown and against this team uh, and the Clippers, which uh, I've been fading a bit here and there uh, as well. Feel pretty good about it. So. Uh, Another guy here, another point guard who uh, playing above, I think he took a little bit of a leap this year uh, that we've been waiting for De'Aaron Fox um, and and those Kings. And it, we talk about them in that game video versus the Nets. Not sure how comfortable and how much we love uh, this game. I know you like the Kings a bit more. We lean under maybe that's close to 50 50. So not much to get there. But De'Aaron Fox is, is doing his thing right now. Twenty nine and a half points and assists. It's minus one twenty at DK. It's not if you wanted to try to shop that and, and maybe even um, buy it or sell 
sell a few things uh, and get it to like 30 and a half or something so you could get closer to uh, even money. I, I understand that too. His last five since he, he sat out one game, uh, first of all, I, I should say his averages on the season are, are above this 29 and a half. It's 25 and a half points a game and six assists um, against, you know, every, every, t- in, in all of the games that he's played this season. So I feel good about that. His last five since he's, he sat a game, he's actually upped his numbers a bit to about 27 a game, uh, seven and a half assists. His usage rates up at about 29 and a half percent in that time, shooting 55 percent from the field. Very crucially, 36 percent from three, which is huge for him. 82 percent from the line is actually pretty good as well. He's had some seasons finishing set in the 70s. So keeping it above 80 percent for him is huge as he does get to the line uh, a pretty good amount, especially for a point guard. We know he loves to run a gun and gets about five a game, um, but I, which is what you would like against uh, Brooklyn. I like the assist as well um, because of the fact that they, Brooklyn does allow the fifth most uh, assists per game to their to opposing point guards. Not for many other positions, to be honest, they've done pretty well against under Vaughn in terms of limiting assists, but not to opposing point guards specifically um, where they average they allow about 23 points and nine assists a game to opposing point guards uh, D Fox is getting about 36 minutes or so uh, a game uh, so far this season or 33 rather but still playing a bunch in those games that he needs so he's the best clutch player in the NBA right now Nate I should also make that clear uh, De'Aaron Fox averaging the most points uh, and, and has an incredible assist to turnover ratio in clutch time as well another reason you might lean Kings there with the way that he's been playing taking care of the ball and it's that shooting five threes a game making nearly two of them 1.9 for 5.1 from the three-point line that's what we've been waiting for for him is if you at least are a, a, a worried that he can make an open three um and he's shooting 37 percent from there then everything else is going to come because not very many people can stay in front of him yeah i mean the clutch scoring is key here it, with a basically a pickup line you expect the nets to get in the, to a close one here um and fox to to get his down the stretch um so yeah i like that pick just fine a steer away from Sabonis, I think, because how good the Nets have been limiting pain points. But at the same time, they just got shredded down low by the Lakers. So um, the one under we're going to take here, uh, I take I, we kind of like under in this Jazz Knicks game. The ja- the Knicks at least at least their bigs know if they don't play defense, they're going to get yanked off the floor like R.J. Barrett was on Sunday. And Laurie Markkinen, I mean, he tends to struggle against teams that are physical down low that limit pain points. You look at his numbers uh, recently after after roasting Atlanta, he struggled against Washington and Philly, really struggled on the defensive end against Philly as Joel Embiid put up like a, a wilt-like quadruple double basically uh, against him. Uh, the Knicks are first in pay points on offense. So if he's not getting it done down low, we might not see as much of him uh, from the Jazz here. At home, he's averaging seven rebounds per game versus nine and a half on the road. He does score a few, little bit more at home. I do think the Jazz are due for some negative regression in terms of their shooting. Yeah. He's shooting 60% at home thus far. So 27 and a half points and rebounds. I want to get the rebounds in there because I don't think he's your typical big that can that can really muck it up with these Knicks bigs who are true rebounders. Uh, and, and the Jazz overall, 27th in rebound rate. Uh, so I like that better than 19 and a half points on the under for marketing. I, I do think that that's a fine market though, but uh, yeah. on the road, the Knicks are allowing 43 pain points. So that's the fourth lowest. And in, and in three against Tibbs, the Tibbs Knicks, if you will, marketing is getting 11 points per game granted in 28 minutes at a lower usage, but that's a long way to go to get you probably the 21 points you would need uh, for him to get over this combined total. Yeah, I think if we're leaning on on uh, an under in this game, as we both are, at 230 and a half, um, you can still go under and have some guys get some stats because that's a very, very high total. Um, but if you're going to lean under and you're going to look at where you, you think the Knicks, um, you know, obviously the strength of their defense, Mitchell Robinson might be back tonight. He's been out for a bit. That definitely didn't help them, uh, or maybe it did actually help them give up 145 points uh, to the Thunder recently. I think it's going to be tightened up a bit. I mean, you, you just it's not going to be two games in a row like that. Let's put it this way: If the Jazz blow this team out today, the the Knicks, the Fire Knicks, uh, the Fire Tibbs uh, chance from the Knicks are, are going to be probably coming to the Garden pretty soon. So um, I, I do think there's a bit of a reason to have some pride in that Knicks defense uh, and play a little bit better down low. So um, let's finish things off with one more over. I'm, I'm sticking to that Kings Nets game. Talking about KD, let's just talk about the two best players on each of these teams. We talk about Fox, not KD. 37 and a half points and assists for that man as well. That's minus 105. Um, because 
because that's very, very high. And you're pretty much banking on him scoring close to 32 points or so. I think five to six assists is like the what you expect from KD. If he gets you seven, eight, nine, then you feel good about it. But he's got to he's got to put up the points. I mean, he, he is the offense. Um, we, we were looking earlier at what they are uh, on the, the last seven since uh, Vaughn took over. KD is when KD is off the floor, they are a minus six net rating. <laughs> um, everybody else, when they're off the floor, the, the, the worst is is still positive, right? Royce O'Neal, when he's off the floor, there's still a positive net rating for the Nets. Every other player besides KD can come off the floor. They'll still have a positive net rating. KD comes off, it drops to minus six. So um, that tells you playing 33 or so minutes a game um, uh, in that time frame with a six, 32% usage rate. This is all under Jacques in those last seven games, 29 points a game, six and a half assists a game. Uh, you look at a few of the most recent ones, 11 dimes versus the Wizards, 12 dimes versus the Knicks and a triple double when they blew them out. You didn't even have to play in, in a lot of that fourth quarter. 31, nine and seven versus LA. So seven dimes at least in all those games. Um, Sack, they're not good on defense for pretty much everywhere. Um, they're a little bit better in terms of limiting assists, but that's also because they just don't have very many good uh, one-on-one defensive matchups for you. Uh, there's no stoppers on their team that you're like, oh, avoid going up against this guy. It's like, no, let's just attack every single person on their team from every position. Um, and, and that's why I don't think they're really specifically bad against any one spot. Not that it matters. KD is his own position. Um, and we talk about it in the game video, the way that this team is playing defense against a three is horrible, um, but they're they're a little bit better in the paint. Um, but it's also that two point mid range that you talk about Mike Brown funneling that defense uh, and really trying to push people off of the three point line where Katie's happy to shoot it from wherever you want. If you're going to give him that three pointer at the at a rate of allowing your opponents to shoot like 38 percent from three, which are the Kings right now, then I'll take it. But if you want to push him it right inside for a one handed 17 foot pull up, I'm also pretty fine with that for him to get those 32 points or so. And then you could throw the assist on there happily so that you get that that minus 105 instead of the points which are you know closer to minus 115 for him yeah you only need 31 points for him to get that point total but i i do like adding the peripheral stats because i think mike brown's gonna have a scheme in place to deal with durant i mean him being such a central part of this offense and it might be kind of like force him inside then try to make him give the ball up so he might be kicking out to like 25 threes tonight and if the net only if the nets hit like nine of those that's still nine assists for Durant. So, I, I mean, the ball's just going to be playing in his hands. Everything's going to go through him. So that's why I would want to combine the assists with it. I think that's a good call. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, it's the same concept as, as Fox, who's got the ball in their hands for most of this game uh, and is making things happen in a game that we'll see. We, we're, we're Neither of us are probably going to lay anything on tonight's game. We are going to have some fun watching it. Nate leans Kings a little bit. I'm leaning uh, Fox and Durant at the very least. So that's all the time we have for you guys in this one. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along with us. We'll be back each and every weekday of this regular season for you with some game line videos and those player props that we've got for you. So until we see you next, happy betting. <laughs>